you've just developed the most awesome API the world has ever seen, and now it's time to test it. And that's when problems arise. How to test that API and what tools to use? It's not so simple and nor is streamlining the whole process. What if I tell you that you can explore and test your APIs in a similar way to working with files and folders, if only that was true? Wait a minute, it is true, and we're exploring it today. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Coder Day. I'm very excited about today's topic, and I think it's super cool. If you're like me, just hit the like button below. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Just click on the subscribe button below right now and enable the notification so you will not miss any other video I'll post. Today, we're gonna talk about HTTP REPL. I know the name is not the most beautiful thing you've ever heard, but stay with me until the end because I promise you it's worth it. HTTP REPL, where REPL stands for Read, Evolve, Print and Loop, is a cross-platform command line tool which is supported everywhere .NET Core is supported. And it can be used for making HTTP requests to any API, ASP.NET Core APIs, but also non-ASP.NET Core APIs, and see their results. And it is capable of testing APIs hosted basically anywhere, including localhost and app service. At the time of recording, it supports these HTTP verbs, including delete, post, put, get, etc. But let's see this in action. Did I mention I'm very excited about it? Here I have a simple ASP.NET Core Web API application, which exposes a couple of API endpoints for fruits and people. While there are a few ways to use HTTP REPL, I'll start with a CLI. But first, let's start the application so it's running for us to debug. Let's grab the URL up here and move to the terminal. Now here we can type HTTP REPL and paste the URL. What the tool does is connecting to our URL and grabbing out the Swagger definitions. As you can see, the look and feel of the tool is exactly like a terminal for files and folders. But instead, if you look at here, we have our HTTP URL instead of uh, C or whatever other folder you would normally be in. But it doesn't only look like a terminal, it actually works like one. For example, I can do dir or even ls to have a list of my APIs. You see, I have the fruits and the people APIs. If I want, for example, to navigate into the fruits API, I'll just digit cd fruits. Now I'm in the fruits API, so I have two options here, which is get and post. Let's try with the get first. Just insert get and press enter. Boom, this returns me all my list of fruits I have in my application. And I can also go more in depth. For example, if I know the ID of the object I want, I can just type get and the ID, let's say three, to have my object with ID three, which in this case is strawberry. But it doesn't end here because I can also do post operations. So let's try and post something. Let's type post, enter. And what the tool does is opening my default editor to let me edit my JSON body. In this case, I only have two properties, ID and names. Since I'm doing a post operation, ID will still be zero but I need to provide a name. Let's insert pineapple. What I have to do is just saving and close the editor. And boom, my new object is there. And I can prove it if I do get again, I have pineapple there. And as we've seen, it supports other HTTP verbs like delete. So let's try to delete it. Delete for get, and we only have three objects. And of course this works also for the other APIs. I can go back one level do ls again and go to the people API. And one cool thing is that I have the auto completion. If I press tab on the keyboard, boom, people. Let's do get and so on and so forth. I guess now you got why I'm excited about it. But it's not finished because we can actually do all of this within Visual Studio. No need to go to the terminal. Let's just select HTTP REPL as default target for debug. Start debugging. And here we go, same experience as before. I can do dear, I can do get, and so on and so forth. And I didn't have to open the terminal. What I've done is changing the debug target in Visual Studio from the normal web browser to HTTP REPL. And Visual Studio and REPL work together, so they start the application and start the REPL tool to allow me to browse my APIs. This is really cool, I love it. What do you think about HTTP REPL? And what other uses do you envision for it? 
I would love to hear your opinion, just leave me a comment in the section below about it. And remember, hit the like button below if you think that this video provides values to you. Now that we've seen it in action, let's see how we can integrate HTTP REPL into our preferred IDEs like Visual Studio and VS Code. But first, we need to install it. To have HTTP REPL in your machine, you need to have the .NET Core 2.1 SDK or later. As you can see here, I'm on the 3.1.300, so I'm, I'm good to go. Then, to install HTTP REPL, run the following command. .NET tool install g microsoftnet http REPL. In my case, of course, it's already installed, but with this, a .NET Core global tool is installed from the microsoft.net HTTP REPL NuGet package. And this is all you need for installing this awesome tool. Now that we have HTTP REPL on our PC, it's time to configure our IDEs so we can launch it within them and debug our APIs. Let's start with Visual Studio. You can configure Visual Studio to automatically launch HTTP REPL when you F5 a project with a few simple steps. First, go to the Launch dropdown and select Browse with. Then click on Add, and finally paste the full path of the HTTP REPL executable. And of course you need to give it a name to identify it in the selection. Click OK, and now you have it in your selection. To get the full path, you can just execute the command you see down here in your terminal and copy and paste the result. Don't forget to select it from the menu after adding it. Just go to the dropdown, web browser, and select HTTP REPL. So next time you hit F5 on your project, Visual Studio will automatically launch HTTP REPL with the appropriate base URL. The Visual Studio team is actually currently working on integrating HTTP REPL into Visual Studio itself to give you a better and more refined out-of-the-box experience. But for the time being, this is how you do it. Next, let's see how to integrate HTTP REPL into VS Code. And you do so by creating a new launch configuration. If you're not familiar with launch configurations, they are simple, um, well, kind of simple, launch.json files that are located in the .vs code folder present in your workspace or the root of your project. To create or change a launch.json file, open your project folder in VS code, and then go to the debug section and select this little gear up here. This will open your existing launch.json file and this is probably what you see if you are trying to debug a .NET Core web API. And actually, this is auto-generated by VS Code. To integrate with HTTP REPL, now we need to do two things here. First, we need to create a new configuration for HTTP REPL. And this is the block you need to add. This tells VS Code to use the HTTP REPL command and instruct it to use the specific URL where our application will be listening. But this is not enough because, as I said, our application has to be listening meaning that we have to start it before the HTTP REPL. If we start our application just with this configuration, what happens is that VS Code will just launch the HTTP REPL command line. To do so, we then need to add a compound as well, as you can see here. And this goes before the configuration, and basically it's a group of configurations that needs to be executed together. We are telling to VS Code to first launch the .NET Core configuration, and then when it is running, launch the HTTP REPL configuration. If we save this and go back to the debug, we can select the .NET Core REPL. And if we start it, we can see here that our terminal is showing the HTTP REL command line in which I can, as before, explore my APIs and get all the values I need. This is super cool. If you haven't grabbed the code, don't worry because you have everything you need linked in the video description below. There is also, of course, a way to integrate HTTP REPL with Visual Studio for Mac, but unfortunately I don't have a Mac, so I cannot show it to you. And this brings us to the question of the day. How do you test and debug your APIs? Let me know in the comment section below. I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did, and if you did, please hit the like button below. Thank you very much for joining me today, and see you soon at Carter Dave.